Now in the world of Zelda, Nintendo always tries to create an interesting story that will have a lasting impression on you, which works out well most of the time. However, after experiencing all these games, I started thinking, which moments seen in the Zelda titles are the best and do I remember the most? Well, today we will find out, because the world of Hyrule is a magical place, and sometimes we have to look back in order to remember. Also, this list contains spoilers, which is obvious I think, but I'm just letting you know. Number 10 Now one of my favorite 2D Zelda games of all time is The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. It's in my opinion even better than A Link to the Past. And in this strange game we encounter one new character that we get to know more about slowly but surely. And near the end of the game the developers drop a bomb on us. This character is Ravio, who at first acts as a very strange salesman that kind of hijacks your home to set up shop. He originally came from Low Rule, an alternate dimension similar to Hyrule, and in the end he reveals who he actually is. Apparently Ravio was a loyal servant of Princess Hilda in Low Rule, and left because of complications with the princess who wanted to steal Hyrule's Triforce. And during this moment he also shows his face, and then we learn that he is Link's low ruling counterpart. This big reveal was a huge shocker to everyone who played the game, although you could notice that there was something different about him. In my opinion that moment was very impactful, especially if you look around in the game and find Ravio's house. Here you can read his journal which gives you even more context to the whole situation, which makes it a really cool moment. Number 9 now a while back, Nintendo released a remake of Link's Awakening, a strange Zelda game that just throws you into the whole situation right away. You end up on a weird island and have to find your way home, and during your journey you get to meet all kinds of new characters who you really get to bond with. However, at some point in the game you learn about a certain secret that changes your view on the whole situation there. This tropical island exists solely in the Windfish's dream, who you need to awaken, and your constantly reminded of this throughout your entire adventure. However, one thing you don't know from the very start is that the whole island and everybody on it will disappear when the fish wakes up. And the moment you find out is a great moment in the game, as well as something that's really sad. Because great characters like Marin will be gone as well. In the manga of the game this even becomes a gigantic part of the story, and I totally get why. It can really hit you hard as soon as you realize all of this, making it extremely memorable. Number 8 now everyone who watches this channel probably knows that I'm not a big fan of Skyward Sword, with its motion controls and everything. However, when it comes to story, it's certainly one of the very best of the entire franchise. And there's one moment in the game that I absolutely love. The fight with Demon King Demise, who almost has unstoppable power and is planning to take over the world. And in the end you have one amazing duel with him, which is a bit short, but the whole look and setting of it sure makes it one for the history books. Together with the fight against Ganondorf at the end of Twilight Princess, they're certainly the most impressive sword duels in the entire franchise. And for that reason, I will always remember it. And as you can imagine, this is also my favorite moment of Skyward Sword. Number 7 in almost every Zelda game it's Ganondorf this and Ganondorf that, which can get a little bit lame at times. But luckily enough we also see other villains. For example Vati, whose motivations and ideas are a bit different from your standard Zelda villain. Which we get to learn about in a cutscene that 100% deserves to be on this list. He used to be the apprentice of Aslo, a mighty Minish sage. However in time he changed, and became fascinated with the evil in the hearts of man, and began to desire power. He learned the legends of the Pokori Blade and Light Force, which are powerful artifacts, and at some point he saw an opportunity. The portal between Hyrule and the Minish world was about to open, and his master made a powerful magical cap for the humans that could grant wishes. And so Vati used this artifact to betray Aslo, and without permission put it on, transforming into a sorcerer, cursing Aslo right after. In my opinion this is the best cutscene in the Minish Cap, and really shows off how it all changed, leading to the events in the game. And hey, for once the enemy is different, making it interesting right away. Number 6 In the beginning, Zelda games were very simplistic. Technology couldn't really create very dramatic scenes after all. 
However, from Ocarina of Time onward, they were able to create some crazy cutscenes and stories that impacted almost everyone. And in my opinion, Twilight Princess did a great job at creating drama. And there's one cutscene that I always remember and hit me like a brick as a kid. The cutscene about the interlopers. They were a group looking for the Triforce. And this tribe who were skilled in dark magic attempted to take over the Sacred Realm and establish their power using the Fuse Shadow. But, ordered by the Golden Goddesses, the Light Spirits intervened and sealed away the great magic those individuals had mastered and they ended up banishing the tribe to the Twilight Realm using the Mirror of Twilight. Now we learn about all of this in the cutscene, and I gotta say, it's presented in a very interesting way, mostly due to the fact that they use Link and Ilya. When I first saw this as a kid, it really impacted me, and I wanted to re-watch it right away, because I was quite shocked, and to this very day, I remember it vividly. Number 5 the most famous weapon in the Zelda series is by far the Master Sword, a weapon made for defeating evil, and we've seen it in a lot of games. However, there was one title where getting it was really impressive. Ocarina of Time. Here it's locked behind a door and for hours you collect all kinds of things needed in order to get past it. And as soon as you get through it, you see the legendary blade. All this time you work towards getting to this point, and now it's here. You walk up and pull it out of the pedestal. It's yours. You can finally wield the Blade of Evil's Bane. And I gotta say, this is an amazing moment. The presentation is beautiful, and when I first played the game, the hype for finally being able to use it was real. And it still is to this very day. Number 4 now, while it's cool to finally get the Master Sword in certain games, we also use it to beat evil. For example, in Ocarina of Time, where we stabbed Ganondorf in the head. Now, while this is fun and all, there's an even better example of Ganondorf getting taken down. The one we see in The Wind Waker, where you take on the big villain together with Zelda who wields a bow. Now, eventually, you deal the final blow to Ganondorf, stabbing him through his head and turning him into stone. To be honest, this looked amazing and was a great ending to this game, in my opinion, as well as being one of the most memorable Ganondorf takedowns ever. Looking better than Ocarina of Time even, which is quite hard to do. Number 3 Now the most recent Zelda game kind of reinvented the series, giving it the open world touch that was gone for years. And of course there are some incredible moments in this title. I would say that there are two that really blew me away. One of those was the ending. The moment you stand on a grassy mountain ridge with Zelda and can see the entire world before you with the iconic music playing in the back and the camera zooming out. Oh gosh, this gives me goosebumps you don't even want to know. In my opinion, this is one of the best endings to a Zelda game ever, mostly because of the combination of music and good camera work. It's impressive to say the least. Number 2 However, while the ending is cool, we also get a similar moment at the very beginning of the game, which was inspired by the very first Zelda title. And I gotta say, when you first get out of the Shrine of Resurrection and see this gigantic world before you, you will be stunned. A whole world that seems endless opens right before your eyes, and there is almost nothing there to limit or stop you in any way. And if you compare it with the original artwork made for the very first Zelda game, you really see how much they improved on these titles. And personally, I think all of it is absolutely beautiful. Number 1 I also made a video about the saddest moments in the Zelda games. You can find it in the upper right corner. Just click there and watch it after this video. The world of Termina is for sure a dark one. Happiness can be hard to find in this utterly depressing place. However, it is my favorite Zelda game for that reason. It kind of breaks the rules when it comes to a Zelda story. You have three days to complete your quest and save the world from a horrible fate. A gigantic moon crashing down on the world itself. Now, sure, in every other game there's also a lot at stake, just like in this title, but still, 
it's different here. Because of, um, one thing. You can actually get a real game over in Majora's Mask. And no, it's not just a screen that says this to you. You're constantly under pressure. Because if the time runs out, the moon will actually crash down on the world, and you get to see this firsthand. You see the moon destroying the town, as well as Link. It's a super impressive cutscene, like my lord, and my favorite in the entire franchise for sure. Since no one would ever expect this, but it does fit extremely well with the entire game. And to be honest, this is my favorite cutscene ever, of any video game created so far. It's perfect in every way, and therefore the best Zelda moment ever, in my opinion.